crying little. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another video. Now before you get angry in the comments, just bear with me on this one. When the C43 was first introduced back in, I don't even know, 2018, 17? Um, nobody really knew like what was the point of it? Like where did it stand? It was like this semi-skimmed version of a C63 and you know, did we need it? And I was in that category as well. I thought it was completely pointless. Um, especially the, you know the first one just looked like C-class um, with a slightly more powerful engine under the bonnet and you know feel the kind of invisible tweaks so I kind of you know didn't see the point but AMG have persevered with it and they've kind of developed it more and, and tried to make it a welcome member of the AMG family um, with this facelift which is why I've got them in it they've done a pretty good job to be fair it actually looks the part now but it's the other bits and pieces in terms of this video what what, what am i really comparing it against we're looking at the full fat c63 and c63s um that you know kind of sits above and then below we've got i suppose the cla the new cla45 um, i had the previous gen one before i bought this car so I think that's kind of like a good benchmark because, you know, I, I dailyed my uh, CLA45, so, you know, you'd be doing the same thing with the new one. Right, let's get into the interesting bit straight away, performance. Now, there aren't gonna be any hidden surprises here. The, oh, Eurus. The C63 is going to be a more fun car. You've got a bi-turbo V8 in that, 470 horsepower in the standard model, 503 in the S, uh, rear wheel drive, and a bunch of other, you know, AMG specific tuning, which makes it a very fun and very sideways car. Let's uh, dump this into sport plus. You know this car does feel pretty agile um i won't bs you and say it's you know on the same part as a c63 or a proper cla45 a45 that kind of thing because that's not what this car is it's meant to be a kind of in the middle you know it can be comfortable when it wants to be and then every now and then you can absolutely burn it It's almost like a bit of a, a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Um, if you don't know what that is or means, you probably have to Google it. But basically, the car's got two personalities, uh, which I was very surprised. Like this car is super comfortable when when you want to be. I haven't got the performance seats like I had in my CLA45. Do you know what? I prefer it um, on long journeys and things like that. They just it's much better. But in terms of actual raw performance, you've got 30 horsepower, no, yeah, just under 30 horsepower more than what you had in the previous C43. And, you know, it, it was never underpowered to begin with. So now at 395-ish, basically, um, you know, on roads and things like that, it's more than enough. Chances are you're not gonna track a car like this. I had a CLA45 for three years and I never tracked it, so.
high turbo V6 in this, which I don't know how much sound is pumped in through the speakers, but it sounds playful, sounds aggressive. And I've mentioned, you know, if you follow my channel, it's, it's all about the sounds for me as well. Like you don't need to be going particularly fast, so long as you sound like you're going particularly fast for public roads anyway. 0 to 60 time, you know, it's over half a second slower to 60 than the full fat C63S. However, I live in the north of England and for nine months out of the year, out of 12, it's cold and damp. And if you put your foot down, which we shall do here, in wet conditions, for example, Because this is 4MATIC, four four-wheel drive, you're still going in a straight line. You, you know, you try and do that in a C63 in wet conditions and you don't know where you're going to be, to be fair. And it's strange really because, you know, the E63, you've got 4MATIC Plus. Uh, which is basically it's four-wheel drive but then you can throw it into rear-wheel drive and still go sideways you can even do that in the new a45 new cla45 why they've not put that formatic plus system in the facelift 63 um i don't know i think they're probably saving it for for the new uh, c-class that's due to come out in you know in a, over a year's time or something like that but it just means that in cold and wet conditions you know, you, it's very easy to embarrass yourself up against, never mind this, just, you know, a diesel BMW or something like that. It will kill a 63 off the line. Uh, there's a G-Wagon right there. The new one, I think. Yeah, that's, could that be a daily? Um, not in my price range, to be fair. Not going to lie. Ah, that reminds me. So for, for all that added performance, you know, the, um, you know, that crazy bi-turbo V8 engine, C43 starts at about 50k in the UK. Um, the Saloon 63 starts at, the, this is the base model, at 66,000. Straight away, it's 16 grand more. If you want the S for the extra 30 horsepower and a few other small tweaks, that's another nine grand on top, so that's 75k. So that's a difference of 25k between the two cars for a half second performance difference. Is, is the C63S 50% better than the C43 facelift? I'm not sure, you know. You know, if you took money out of the, the equation completely, yeah, I, I'd have, you know, gone straight to the C63S, but fortunately this is the real world. I'm not making that much off YouTube ads yet. Right, the practicality of this car. Obviously, it's a fair amount bigger than the CLA, but in terms of like space in the back and everything, it's massively improved over something like A-Class Saloon, the hatchback, the normal CLA. Um, obviously, I've got the Saloon here, not the Coupe, so you've got a lot more headroom. Now, I'm... Oh. I'm, I'm short, right, there's no two ways about it, but if you were, you know, going on six foot or whatever, there's plenty of room and the issue in the back of the CLA, uh, which I had with taller passengers, because of that sloping headline, you know, you, you struggle for headroom and anyone above five foot ten, it's just, yeah, it's not comfortable after like more than half an hour, something like that, they do get pissed off. Um, Oh. Right, I've got something in there at the minute, but you know, it's there's a fair amount. You know, I could probably fit in that. Two of me could probably fit in the back of that, to be fair. You've got easy release uh, thingy my bobs for the back seats. Uh, let's see if I can reach. <laughs> Just about, yeah, plenty. Let's get those back on. In 
terms of kit, the interior of the new C43 is basically, you, you can't tell the difference between this and a C63. Brilliant if you've got this car, not so brilliant if you're a C, uh, 63 owner. Um, you know, I've got the same AMG uh, 10.25 inch uh, virtual display, I've got the same steering wheel, all this is pretty much the same. Um, I could have got, I could have got performance seats, but nah, they're not worth the extra. They're quite expensive. Um, in the 45, I think you get them as standard, which I think that's brilliant, the fact that you do get them as standard. Um, but you know, th these are a happy medium, I would say. But yeah, um, I'm gonna stop hooning about now and let's get everything back into comfort mode. And this is the next point I wanna make. When you don't wanna be a 10 year old kid, and you put everything back into standard, into comfort, the car just wafts along, and it's actually very, very comfortable. Now, I, I, I did some very long journeys in like in my CLA 45, you know, two, 300 miles, and after the first hour or so, it does get uncomfortable, the road noise does get, you know, it gets on your nerves a bit. Um, whereas in this, in standard mode, it, it literally feels like a C-Class a base model it's quiet when you want it to be comfortable i did really like the new cla 45 obviously it's not kind of you know they're not taking any deliveries right now but that starts at 52 grand 52 grand for a cla that's it's hard to swallow i know you know the full fat 45s it's it's sick um but fifty-two thousand pounds for a glorified A-Class, which, can you justify it? I don't know, it's down to you. Now obviously in the past 10, 15 minutes I've ragged the car a bit, we're doing 16 miles per gallon, which yeah, isn't great, um, but you know, you don't buy AMGs for fuel economy or anything like that, but if you did care about that stuff, I have had 37 miles per gallon out of this on a 300 mile trip from when I bought the car from Plymouth up to Manchester, um, 37 miles per gallon from a 3 litre bi-turbo V6 that's you know, considerably heavier than my CLA 45. It's pretty good. So um, it's really, it's back to that whole like two different personalities thing. This car's like a schizophrenic really, uh, but in a good way. You get to choose, you know, which characters, which character shows up when. Uh, you know, it's maybe in the summer when the road's completely dry and everything like that. Um, you know, I'd, you'd definitely enjoy C63 or the full fat a, uh, 45s more than this car because, yeah, the steering is a bit light. There's not as much road feel as I had in my previous CLA. Not that that had much to begin with, but it's it's enough. It's back to that whole happy balance. And when you're thinking about real world driving, that's kind of what you want. We're not always driving in, you know, full Lewis Hamilton mode and we're not always driving like old people and it's for that reason why I think you know particularly for where I live what I use the car for and my budget it makes more sense than a C63 S or even the standard one um, and more so than and you know for the practicality reasons it makes more sense than the CLA45 and the A45 um, you might, you guys might disagree, at which point, you know, if you watch this far into the video, you can now go into the comments and go a bit crazy if you want. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next video.